my shoulder. Morning. It's uh, middle of February, and it uh, doesn't look like it. If you look at that scene behind me, that's that's our that's our part of our lavender farm there. And, uh, um, you know, there's no snow on the ground. It's been pretty warm. So, um, uh, you know, over my shoulder here, I don't know if you can see them, but in the back, there's white spots. Those white spots are actually a flock of snow geese that landed in the field uh, yesterday. So, uh, you know, but... Um, yeah, uh, today's kind of today's getting kind of cold, going down to about twelve. But that's the first time in a long time that we've been below freezing, for that matter. So, how are you doing down there in Georgia? Ah, we just got through with a little rain and it's turning cold, but cold to us is uh, in the forties. So, well, you sent <laughs> really you, not very cold. But you sent me a picture. Out. But I actually have some some flowers that are starting to pop out of the ground. So, that's oh little, no, kidding. Little little. little a little advanced over Pennsylvania land. So. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, well, we're always um, jealous up here when uh, when the Masters rolls around and we're looking at all those azaleas in bloom, you know, <laughs> and ours are still brown. And, you know, we oh, yeah. We're, we're a couple of weeks behind you. So, but, uh, well, listen, I, we uh, we promised something uh, the last time we, uh, we did a video together uh, to – uh, our subscribers and our readers, and that was to talk about um, model versus live account uh, performance and uh, drawdown and things like that. Um, uh, I put together a little a little PowerPoint. Um, you want to take a look at it with me? Yes, and, uh, sir. I'm, I'm, uh, I'll, I'll I'll walk through it, and then uh, but you feel free to jump in and everything. Okay. I'll be glad to. All righty. <laughs> and. Uh, you know, we said that we would talk about reasons that portfolio results, live portfolio might not match published results. And uh, one of the reasons that's important to us is because we've said this many times, um, all, all my money is invested the, the way that we, the way that we talk about um, on our site at Stone Barn Portfolios. Um, you know, it's invested in, in several of those, um, uh, strategies and, uh, and blends. Um, and, and we watch those things, things very closely. I know that, uh, I know that you've got several accounts and large part of your own personal assets invested the same way. That's important for us to, to be able to say, Hey, look, you know, when, when, when we say that we believe in this kind of investing, we back it up with the fact that we're actually, actually our own money is invested this way. Um, so one of the things that's important to us is if, if our portfolios aren't doing what our model results say they should be doing, um, that's cause for alarm. Um, fortunately, it, the disparities are very, very small, and that gives us a high level of confidence in our models. But I thought it might be important to run through here. For, for anybody who's kind of new to this or hasn't done this before, there's several reasons. Uh, I'm going to talk about five of them here. But let me talk at first uh, what I mean by um, published results. Well, we publish model results, not live account results. And that's, there's a bunch of reasons. First is we've got a lot of models available and, and we're always adding another one or two. We do that regularly um, because we, um, you know, somebody asks us to, to find a way to, uh, to, to, create a different risk profile or risk return profile. And, you know, we work at that and we'll add that to the, to the stable of our portfolios. Um, not all of the models that we have are suitable for you and me, you know, we're of a particular age and, uh, um, you know, we invest a little bit differently than somebody that might be 40. Um, you know, it's important for us. Uh, you know, we, we use our capital for living as well. So, we don't want to lose what we're a little more cautious than somebody who, you know, is, uh, is younger and has time to recover from losses. You know, we don't, so we invest conservatively. Um, and we put our money in the accounts that are best for us. We, since we have so many models, it would take a lot of capital more than I have on hand, more than you have on hand to have a live account for each model. You know, some of these models, we say, look, you know, you need fifty or a hundred thousand dollars to make these things work well, and um, to be able to buy enough shares to keep, uh, you know, your target allocations uh, close to the recommended 
uh, allocations. And finally, the, the proof in the pudding is live track record. When we're able, we'll publish live account metrics, but if we waited for enough track record on live accounts to show meaningful results, well, nobody would be able to do this with us. You know, most people would want three to five years. And, um, and while we've been doing this for uh, um, just about a year uh, 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 in trading it live, uh, that comes off of uh, three years of research before we actually started uh, doing it. Um, so the way we try to handle this is not, we're not trying to uh, trick anybody, but we're, we, we disclose when it's, when it's uh, not live data. Um, and when we get enough to make that meaningful, we'll differentiate and we'll show you on our tear sheets and stat sheets, uh, what's live and what isn't. But um we, you got to start somewhere, and this is and this is how we start. Um, the model results, where do they come from? Well, they come from modeling software. This is a picture of a of, of something that we use. Um, we use a we use a program um, that that we wrote called Maestro, and uh, and it allows us to um, put together uh, various allocations and in. In, a, in the moment by changing the allocations, we can see the, uh, the shape and slope and comparative uh, characteristics with, uh, with a, any kind of index or market that we want and what the comparisons might be, what the, what the performance might be. And, um, and, but those model results are generated by that modeling software. Why is that important? Well, a couple of reasons. Modeling requires assumptions. You know this. I mean, you know it without having to think about it. And um, I know it, but if someone hasn't done this before or built their own models, they may not realize that you have to, you have to make assumptions. This is where back-tested history kind of loses some of its traction because, you know, these assumptions may not have happened the way that, you know, in real time, the way that they do. So the models assume, for instance, we get perfect fills at the close of the market on the day that we generate the signals. Well, you can't do that because we need the close on that day. We need to, to order in order to actually calculate what we want to own. So we trade early in the next day, typically um, next business day. And uh, that helps us sometimes it hurts us sometimes, but overall, uh, in a live account, by, by tracking that over time, we can tell what those differences are and whether they're significant. If they're significant, all of our model assumptions, all of our model returns uh, come into uh, question. But uh, that has not been the case for us. Our, our accounts track very, very closely with the models. The models assume a commission rate. Now, I have my accounts at Interactive Brokers, and uh, and I, and I model and the model, the returns that we show everybody um, are based on commission rates that are consistent with interactive brokers. Now, um, you have accounts other places, Fidelity, Schwab, uh, you know, some other places. And um, when we use, when, when we're modeling on your computer, we use a different commission rate. <laughs> and we can see that there's a difference between the two. Yeah. You remember one, one, one day we spent about an hour trying to figure out why your results were different than mine. We finally dug down and realized, well, you know, I'm using IB uh, commission rates. You were using uh, Schwab and Fidelity, you know, commission rates, which, <laughs> which were slightly higher at the time. Um, another thing is that the models assume a perfect rebalancing of the strategies. And again, I'm using terms here, which to us are, we don't have to think about, but the strategies are underlying approaches to investing. The portfolios are how we blend those strategies together. And when we blend those strategies together, we can create uh, different risk and return profiles that are appropriate for different types of investors. Our modeling software assumes that each month those strategies are rebalanced, not the individual positions, but the strategies themselves are rebalanced. With, but frankly, we don't do that unless they get way out of way out of whack um, in terms of uh, let's say the momentum strategy takes off and becomes it's supposed to be let's say 40 percent of an account and it turns out to be 50 percent of an account we would rebalance we would have rebalanced before it gets there but that can affect 
a live portfolio, a live portfolio versus a model. We watch them very closely every day. This is a picture of one of the strategies and reports that we get. Um, every day, uh, just before nine o'clock, you and I get an email that shows us what what happened, uh, you know, and where we are um, at different over different periods with the portfolio, the market, and the model. Um, this was from a this was from one day where, where the the uh, the model really outshone the market. Uh, you know, it was a 100, 101 basis point uh, differential, you know, in the portfolio's favor. But something that you'll notice is that the model for the month is up 5%. The portfolio is only up 3.7%. There's a reason for that. And I'm going to talk about that for a minute. Is that important? That would be important if we couldn't look across the page here and see that over the, over the course of a year, the differences between these things are, are minimal. And, you know, you look here, there's 134 basis points uh, difference month to date. Um, you look here for the quarter and you can see that there's uh, what is it? Uh, uh, 83 basis points difference. Um, at, it's because it, there are times where the portfolio has outperformed the model as well. And we're going to look at this for, here in a second. So one of the first reasons you can, you, your results can differ is because your results depend on when you began following our program, the, recommendation, the recommended allocations for your portfolio. I'll show you what I mean by that. Here is a, a picture of my interactive book. Uh, okay, here you go. <laughs> Time to take your medicine. <laughs> I'm, turn, I'm turning my phone off. <laughs> hey, Bob, Ed, you're doing good. Mine's going to go off here in a minute now. But uh, this is a picture of a reallocation, a rebalancing screen that uh, is one of the features Interactive has. I've blacked out this section here, which has all my all my values and market values. I'm not interested in showing you all that, but. Uh, and I've blacked out uh, the list of our holdings with one exception here. Um, we bought Lamb Research several months ago. And Lamb Research, you'll see, if you look over that, the current allocation is 10.62. And uh, our target is 10%. Well, if you were to start right now with, you know, following us, and you've got a list and we showed you that you should, you should be invested at 10% of your portfolio and LAM research. That's what you do. You get as close to 10% as possible. And then if, if you, fo if you followed, uh, you can see that the LAM research has a bigger effect than in our portfolio than it will in yours because it's a bigger percentage of the portfolio. That's just by virtue of the fact that we started earlier and it has grown to that. The models assume this as well. So if you're just starting now, your allocations don't actually match what the uh, the live uh, or what the model and live at, or, or, uh, more aged accounts are going to have. So that's that's one difference. Now over time, these are all going to be, you know start at, uh, aligning with um, all the other live accounts out there and and uh, you'll get closer to the model stuff. But that's one reason. Your results depend on when you trade your account during the day that you rebalance or that you reallocate. Um, and again, here, uh, I, I told you about that difference uh, on that one, one chart that we looked at or one table that we looked at, you know, big change difference between the month to date for the model and the portfolio. And here's the reason. This is another holding that we have. This was just last month, bought Tesla. We had an order to buy Tesla. Okay, well, here's what happened. Tesla closed on January 31st, 650 bucks. And that's, that's when we would, that's what we generated the signal for. Um, that's, we got that price and that price made this something that uh, the, our, our software said we should buy it. The model thinks it bought it at that price at the close. We can't, we couldn't do that. So the next day um, we sent out all the signals. We, we up, updated our website. We, the subscriptions were, you know, all sent out. But the next day 
which was a business day, which was Monday, February 3rd, uh, it opened at six seventy four, twenty four dollars higher. It gapped up. You know, it, it opened higher than it closed the previous market day. This is the best price anybody could have gotten because uh, you know by the time we sent out our signals and our allocations and our target, um, if somebody put in a you know market on open order for Tesla, that's they would have gotten very very close to that number. That's not what I did. I went out and uh, you and I had a, you and I um, did a video that morning. Uh, we had a, we had a call. We went over uh, several items that we had, uh, that we had uh, to discuss with each other. And I think, you know, we spent about an hour and a half on the phone that morning and, um, and then hung up and I said, okay, now I'm going to go trade my account. I, I always wait until the morning uh, open kind of, uh, settles down. This is just stuff just at the open is so hectic and busy that I, I tend to trade later in the morning. So the market for me opens at 930. I typically trade between 10 o'clock and noon um, on those days. That's what I did here at 11 o'clock. I went out and I, I just put in my order to buy Tesla. At that time, the price was 727. <laughs> Well, the model thinks that I, you know, I bought it and is reporting as if we bought it at 650. I bought it at 727. My profits are calculated from that price. I'm glad I bought it that early. If I had waited until uh, uh, maybe uh, three o'clock, you know, to do it, um, it was up way up over $800. So I, I never know where it's going to go. I don't try to time it. I just, at my earliest convenience, after the hecticness of the, of the, open is is past me i do this i'm pretty consistent between 10 and 12 o'clock each month i make any changes to my portfolio that i need to make i sell and then i buy we'll do a video on that sometime on uh, on how to actually go through that process so my profits are calculated from this price rather than the model entry of 650 my profits are calculated from here in the portfolio so if you know if um if, if we go if we go back to that my portfolio profits here are calculated from that higher price where the model is calculated from that previous day's closing price. That's why the, that's why there's a discrepancy. So, um, oh, I've, got, I've got to interject. You yeah. Got, you got a better price than I did because I was, uh, I think uh, early afternoon. So yeah, uh, at, right. And, and, and that's, and, and while this is just a one-off, uh, thing, we all know that these individual stocks that we hold can can have really impulsive uh, things that are driven by news or earnings and things like that at the start of a, a typically at the, about a month after the, the quarter ends. That's right. And th this is a this is a probably an abnormal one. But I also have to make point is that we would have still had to take the same action had it been down. Yeah, that's right. Had, too. So I, I think it, the model is one thing and we follow the dictates of our models. And, and so, yeah, you're absolutely, you are absolutely right. And that's why my next point is I don't care. Yeah. That's Cause right. it works in the other direction too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me, let, let me show you a picture. You, you and I look at this every day, but this is a picture of uh, the, the, the light blue line is a live is, is my live account for the defensive growth, the NDX defensive growth portfolio. Um, the red line is the S&P 500 cash index. The black line is the model, the values that the model creates every day. And, and what we're doing, we're really interested in comparing the blue and the black line. If you look back over time, you can see that the blue line underperformed the black line for a few months. Then they paralleled each other. I mean, they, they essentially duplicated each other until the blue line actually outperformed. And that's, that's the actual live account, outperformed the model from August all the way into November when it, uh, it came back in line with the model. Again, you can't, you can't tell the difference between the model and the portfolio, the live account here. The black and the blue 
day by day having <coughs> almost exactly the same uh, daily delta, the daily change until here. And this is where Tesla came into the picture. Tesla, Tesla spiked the model. We had a spike too, but not quite as much. And the effect of this is, let me go back up one slide. The effect of this is when, uh, when I'm buying at a higher price, another thing that happens is I'm not, uh, since I'm allocating a percentage of my portfolio, I'm not getting as many shares. And so if I could have bought at 650, I would have had more shares of Tesla than I was able to buy at 727 because I was committing the same amount of money. So uh, that affects us while we hold Tesla, that affects us too. Anything that Tesla does with more shares, it's a, it's a bigger effect on the account. Um, and so you can see here that the, the model probably holds more shares proportionally than I do because I bought it at a higher price. And, um, but again, you can see the small gap here between the model and the, uh, the, the live portfolio. And uh, I can almost guarantee you within a few months. Guarantee is not a word that investment advisors use very often, but I can almost tell you uh, <laughs> from looking at this that the, the, the correlation here is in the high, high 90s here on how these two correlate in their movement with one another. So I'm not worried. Um, your results depend on how closely you can approximate model allocations. And it's not, nobody can do it perfectly. Let me show you something. This is a spreadsheet that I use. And this is a sample that I, that I put up. I, 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 there you go. Now it's time to take your meds. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I'm not doing much this morning except disrupting things. So I, I got to I got to be good at that. Anyway. <laughs> this is a spreadsheet that I that I actually use uh, month to month. I put up here. I put in this again. So I have stuff blanked out. So I'm not giving away my personal info. But um, I put up here. I put my current portfolio value. Um, I have a list of symbols and how many shares I have. Um, you know, if I don't have any, I put zero. Um, and then I put in what the current share price is. And then I get a current value. I also type in how much cash I have, you know, how much is not invested at the moment. And I can see then what my current portfolio allocations are by percent. And here are my target allocations. Now these aren't really target allocations for any, for any particular strategy, but you can see that, okay, well, uh, I've got my targets 20. My actual allocation is 19.8. So I've got a variance of minus 20 basis points. And I permit up to 1%. So I've got, I'm not even close on this one. So my action is to hold. There's no shares to trade. And uh, I don't have to worry about it. And my position, my portfolio percent after those is exactly the same because I'm holding on to all these positions. If I was at variance, then these, um, these would say buy or they say sell. And over here, there'd be a narrative that says, sell this many shares of such and such at a limit of such and such. And, um, and then doing so, I could see after, if I were to make those trades, what would the, what would the percentages be uh, relative to the targets afterwards? And, uh, um, you can see that you can't get, because if I were to buy one more share or whatever the symbol is here at $222, well, number one, I don't have enough cash to do it. But if I were, instead of being at 19.8, I'd be at probably 20.2% of the portfolio. I'd have the same amount of variance, but it would be on the upside. I'd hold 20 basis points more. You can't, you can't, uh, without being able to, unless you're buying mutual fund shares, and now Interactive is making it possible to buy fractional shares, but I have not made use of that feature yet. <clears throat> but unless you can do that, <clears throat> you're gonna be at variance. And so depending on how close you are to your targets here, you're going to end up with different results than the model, because the model, gets it, you know, gets it right every, every time. So that's another reason. Another thing is your results depend on how much of your capital is invested. 
you have cash or money market assets in your account, they're not at work for you in your portfolio. They are inevitable, however. Take, take a look again at this sheet here. You can see 16 basis points of my money is sitting in cash. Why? Because the amount that that adds up to is less than one more share of any whatever these securities are. I can't, I can't invest it. I, there's nothing cheap enough for me to get all that invested. So, but 16 basis points, I've got 99.84% of my account at work in this theoretical portfolio. That's really good. Um, you know, most accounts, they're somewhere in the, in the two to 5% range. And, um, uh, uh, if it gets over 5%, then we think probably you need to do a little more work on, on how you're uh, investing here, uh, whether you're getting, you know, getting as much as you possibly can invested. Now everybody has cash needs too. At the same time, you're, you know, you have your investment account. Uh, it's got a cash management feature and you're, you know, you have a, an ATM card associated with it or a credit card tied to that balance. Yeah. You've got to keep some cash there. So it's another reason that uh, that your your account performance may or may not match your portfolio performance. Um, one last thing, and this is kind of technical, but the model prices are dividend adjusted. We we have to do that, otherwise, um, when we when we measure actual, uh, let's say for for um, for uh, momentum. We're, we're measuring um, how how fast and how far uh, a stock price is moving on a given day. If we were to not adjust for dividends, well, you know, it might go up. Let's say a dollar stock might go up ten percent, have a ten percent dividend, and be back at a dollar because the dividend's been paid out. It would show no momentum, but really there was a ten percent move in the stock. So um, we have to use dividend adjusted. Uh, prices in order to get accurate, uh, you know, uh, model results. Um, if you don't have a dividend reinvestment plan, some, some brokerages have, them. you know, think of what happens if you, if, if a stock pays a dividend, it goes into your cash account, it increases the percentage of cash in the account, which effectively lowers the percentage of uh, money at work in, in that uh, issue that paid the dividend. So that can happen. Um, and again, uh, that's, one reason that it might differ, your account might differ from the model. That's it, Don. That's all I wanted to show you. Um, you have any comments? Do you want me to take a look at any of these things again? No, I just want to say that it's clear to me that in looking at my accounts, say I have a Schwab account and a Blotie account, rarely do I have uh, both of them uh, even close because yeah. of the time of day you buy things and all the, all the points that you just made. And, and I would say that I don't see any, uh, with the years experience that we put into to this right now is that I see no, uh, about half the time we're better and about half the time we're lower. So, but, but, we got our own pennies right there. So we share within a very small window of uh, the same kind of a, uh, returns yep. that, that we publish in. Yep. It's, it's just a common situation. And I would, I would doubt that you would ever be very far away from, from what we put in e either, either one of our uh, computer model or our live accounts. So, yeah. Yep. We'll, uh, you know, the more, the more data we collect, you know, the more, the more we'll know. Um, but uh, we went through, well, I, I won't say we, uh, it was you, you know, because you're so good at it. Uh, you know, I, I would send you a list, a list of historical trades and, you know, there might be 230 trades in there and, you know, you, you would spend days going one by one looking for discrepancies and matching it up to prices that are on the price chart and to, to see whether or not it made sense that this actually was the kind of profit that you would have gotten. And what, what if you had, I mean, we've tested opening, um, 
you know, at the at the next open and versus the close. And we we found that by by reporting on the buying at the close on signal day, that we can get really, really close to what live accounts do. And some days, some months, like this one with Tesla, you know, um, the model beats us. Uh, but other months um, with other stocks, um, you know, we beat the models. And uh, as you can see, um, you know, if we're within 100 basis points, um, yes. uh, I'm really, I'm really, really happy. And uh, that's that, was, not, that was a good report. That's not going to affect. That's not going to affect our, our, you know, what we're trying to accomplish in our investment accounts. You know, you know, by by having that kind of variance. So. Well, yeah, that's it. Well, listen, thanks, and uh, uh, I, I'm sure that's uh, potentially confusing to some people, but uh, we do care. Yeah. And, and we, we, we'll explain anything at questions that we have. So don't yeah. mind. Yeah. And uh, I, one thing I forgot to say, that spreadsheet that I showed you that I use for rebalancing my accounts, we'll make that available to subscribers if they want it. Um, they just, you know, just shoot me a message. Not or, me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. They were, woo, right <laughs> Well, I'm lucky because Interactive Brokers uh, has uh, <laughs> you know, has this rebalance feature, which is which is really nice. But um, I've got accounts at uh, TD Ameritrade or Thinkorswim used to be um, that they don't have that feature for me to be able to do that. So I need that spreadsheet. Yeah. Um, you know, that's so I can I can rebalance my accounts there if I need to. It tells me how much to buy, how much to sell, and all that stuff, and what where I'm at variance, where I'm not. Oh, and I watch it every month. And, uh, and and track it. So, uh, but that spreadsheet, um, you know, I continue to improve it all the time, you know, add a little thing here, add a little thing there. But uh, uh, if anybody wants that, uh, you know, contact us through the contact form on our, our website, stonebarnportfolios.com, or uh, shoot me an email, uh, paul.montgomery at stonebarnportfolios.com, and uh, I'll make sure that you get a copy of that. And uh, then if you get questions, maybe what we'll do is uh, um, we'll set up a, a, one of our monthly videos will be how to, how to actually use that, uh, that spreadsheet and, uh, you know, make an effective tool for you. So, uh, all right, Don. Uh, I'm, I don't want to leave the party, but I got a friend that's going to buy me some catfish today. So I'm out of here. Boy, you are living the dream, brother. I'm happy for you. <laughs> all righty. Have a good